Yes, I am, Big Buddy on Facebook. folks welcome back i told you i would be back good to see some new faces in here talking in the chat there some good questions there what was the one i wanted to answer right away oh yeah <clears throat> i am a big buddy on facebook that was me i don't use facebook anymore i use youtube uh, it's all good yeah white some images there all right so Let's get started. All right. Thank you all for taking a moment of your precious time to be with this precious, precious family. I think you guys are starting to realize how precious this family is. <clears throat> now, let's get to business. All right. Never mind that black hole back there. Okay. All right. Uh, this is April 15th, 2024. All right, and here's your loop plan right there. Okay, that's a digital glitch or whatever, but... um pretty scary for the activity that was going on at the time right in that region right there okay so let me uh start picking through this for you guys all right let's catch opening frame well well there wasn't much going on previous to that so we'll just pick up there got a lot to cover and i got appointments tonight so I gotta make this quick. All right, you can see a partial halo CME coming out of here. But what I wanna point out, boom, right there. And then we have this little event going on. Nope, something dark right there in the center. I don't know what you be the judge of that one. That one's kind of faint, so not really gonna focus too much on that one tonight. Is this right here? All right, you can already see the little black core right there. Let me just zoom in on it real quick. All right. Oh, and by the way, did you see the water bulge during the opening there? Mm-hmm. The water bulge that was captured on film. Anyways, there's your, uh, your little object here. It looks like there might be two in a row, one up here, too, so... Hard to tell, maybe one, two, three. I'll let you be the judge of that. You can come over to this instrument as well and take a peek around. But for the moment, I see that going on right there. I'm sure you could, you do too. So let's uh, continue on here. I'm a little pressed for time and I cut so much. Now, if we were to see a moon coming out, you know, a little satellite approaching the sun first, with something bigger back behind it, that would be an image that we kind of would see. This isn't a this isn't that though. This is a glitch image. Okay, you can see it's all offset on the page. Okay, it's a glitch. But if there were something back there, we would probably have something. If the sun were to ever react with it, we would get something effect similar to that kind of. So interesting how the glitch happens to look like something that we would look for kind of in a situation like this. All right. So this has the potential to throw us off when we do see a real, a, a, a big major one like that. Okay. So let's continue on. It does kind of look like it's part of this though, doesn't it? <laughs> Anyways, note your full halo CME coming out right there as well. All right. So during that event, let me just start it all over again. Let that roll for you for a second there. Let me get a little better camera position here. 
All right, so there's your loop for today. And then uh, while we're here, I need to back it up a little bit. So there's your report for today. Um, I want to back this up to where were we? Fifth. Okay, and let that load up while we're coming over here to the solar ham. And here we are. Still no graphics for this one because, uh, well, when you view it from that perspective, it looks a little more disturbing. So we just click it on this one. And I don't know for whatever reason, but they're just not being able to image it. That's fine. We have this right here. Okay. Very bumpy ride today. Multiple M flares today. All right. So very bumpy ride. And we'll uh, come back over here and look at it. I don't, that's why I don't like that graph. Um, four of them and M4.3, a 2.3, a 2.2, and a 4.4 down below here. Okay. X floor potential is 5%. Sorry about the alert there. Uh, 5% <clears throat> X, 60 on the M. That should be 100. <laughs> I mean, we're popping off M flares like crazy. Look at the jump in the number of sunspots. And now we have one going beta gamma. Uh, sunspot 3639. See this absorption right here? This is spike right there. Okay, we had that, uh, that second wave of energy that was due on the 15th hit us. Okay. Uh, you can even see here in the auroras just a tad bit of yellow in there. Okay, so now we're starting to get into medium, a medium type strike here. Okay, not full medium, but you can see a hint of yellow in there. So they're very, you know, they're they're pretty good, going pretty good right now. I'd say we're taking on some energy. Um, do, 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 do. Is this the one from the fifteenth? All right. Let me just read this for you real quick. Solar activity remains at moderate levels. Okay, we're already at moderate levels with the sun rotating, the active region rotating around. They make it saying remains at moderate levels. We're already at moderate levels with a number of M flares detected on Monday. The largest of these was the M4.0 solar flare within the past half hour. Uh, 3639 is the northeast quadrant. The region was also responsible for the majority of the M flares today and a number of C flares. So far, none of this activity looks to be associated with Earth-directed eruptions, but AR3634... In the northwest quadrant, also produced a low-level M flare, and there is currently at least 10 numbered active regions on the Earth-facing side of the visible disk now, okay? We just popped up to 10. We're just going to town now. The latest solar flare threat risk is at 60% for M flares and 5 for a chance of isolated X flares. Watch for this 5% to increase the more these regions rotate around to us, okay? unfortunately. And then here's a nice little note from them saying, please note that the x-ray graphic on the solar ham website is still not updating properly. This is stored on the NOAA SWPC server and hopefully it is fixed soon. Okay. And that's nice of them to do that. I know what's going on. I know exactly what's going on. Okay. Anyway, so back over to here, here's your M.4 or your uh, 4.0 Empler there. And then I want to, uh, well, let's open up the tracker real quick here. Bingo. Look at this. Bam. We are now going to have a shot right to the face right there. That's not good. Especially in the condition that the planet's in right now. We don't need to be taking on any more energy because we just took two little two little you know small shots and that's going to absorb and we're going to see results from that then when this hits we'll absorb that and then we'll see even more results from that so a little bit of bad news there sorry you guys i don't i don't like them when they come our direction but sometimes they do and let's load up this one dang it Here they're showing like a double shot combining there and then definitely making a strike it and hitting us right around the, well, the beginning of the 18th right there. Okay, so everybody hold on. Uh, we just had something come off the sun today that's heading our way. Uh, today is the 15th. 
and it's due three days later on the 18th, okay? So that three days later type effect again, and that's something we're going to cover tonight as well in the uh, in the water bulge report. <laughs> that's going to be a report of its own now, the water bulge report. <laughs> yeah, you never would have thunk. So I need to get backward, backward again. Now, this region right here that just fired off the 4.0. Whoops, I want this. Where is it? Bingo, right there. All right, so here's 36.39. This is our old region 36.50. No, it's not. This one is right here. This is old 36.15 region right here, all this multiple spot area. And then this is the one that I think uh, fired off today, the M4 right there. So just like last time we had these two sunspot regions, last time it rotated around, they both survived all the way around, okay? There's an active side of the sun now and, an, and a very quiet side of the sun. Something is rotating around the sun or the sun's passing by something on this side that's causing disruptions, okay? It's, there's something going on that's causing one side of the sun to be super active and the other side to be super quiet. And if you listen to Mike from around the world, he, he knows what he's talking about. He told you this was coming, okay? And he, he's right. I'm trying to tell you guys, listen to him. He's trying to help you guys understand. Anyways, let's back out of this, okay? I need to get going. Our lifted indices now. Look at this. We marched from the 120s. We are now in the 190s, okay? That's why you don't want to see this thing, because the, the main line is almost up to the X flares. We're running, so I won't tell you here, but we're running probably, well, let's go see. Okay, we're coming back down out of it a little bit to uh, the seafloor right here, this little line. Okay, let me move my hand there so you can see how it's slowly kind of declining back down out of the indices. But up here, all this was lifted indices all day long. So as this thing approached, the indices keep getting higher and higher and higher and higher. We have our event, and then they kind of mellow out and go down until we have another inbound. Because it looks like we're going to have another inbound coming too. So, so much to cover, and I just got to keep moving. So, um, yeah, our next couple of days are calling for no geomagnetic storms. Um, just got to highlight this real quick. Geomagnetic storm watch canceled. All right, I beg to differ. I showed you an impact yet the other day on the uh, on the D region. All right, that was the first impact. Then there was an impact today. I posted that one on my community page, and we can go over there and take a peek at that if we have to. But I just posted on my community page this latest. Oh, please with the ads, you guys. Ugh. Hang on, I. I have to pull it up later or it would have jammed up my uh, my intro. So I'm going to the community page right here. And I had to capture it while I had it and I just post it for, uh, for, for the record so I can come back and reference it. So here we are, January 15th down here. Okay, or not January, <laughs> April 15th, sorry, tax day. Oh, I hate this day. Oh boy, are you guys in a lot of trouble. All right, so you can see this red impact right here. That's the second impact that we took, all right? On the 15th, we were talking the 14th and the 15th. We saw both impacts, the 14th, and here's the 15th, okay? So geomagnetic storm watch is canceled now because a pair of minor CMEs did have impact, okay? Now it's canceled because we saw the impact. Now there's a new one because there's that new huge one coming at us. So watch out there. All right, increasing solar flare activity. During the past 24 hours, the sun has produced half a dozen M-class solar flares. See this right here? That's today. That's what we're looking at. All these M flares, M2, M1, 2, 1, a 2, a 4, all within this short period of time right there. 
Okay, so increasing solar flare activity in the past 24 hours. We expect activity to continue and intensify. AR 3639 has quadrupled in size since the weekend. You remember last time when it, what, 10 times in size or whatever? Here it goes again. It's already quadrupled in size and it is now turning towards Earth. You know what that means? Everybody hold on tight and pray. Geo, geo effective solar flares are likely on April 16th. Okay, well, um, something that I need to correct here because I did a comment about the sun killing the devil comet, and it was not the devil comet. There are two different comets. This is Comet Soho 5008. This is the one that just got destroyed by the sun. Comet 12P Ponds Brooks is still out there lingering around. Okay, so I made a mistake. And I like to clear it up real quick when I do, okay? And thankfully, this report came and cleared things up here. Chinese am amateur astronomer Lin uh, headlines last week when he traveled to New Hampshire and photographed a comet disintegrating during the total eclipse, okay? We saw that as well last week. Uh, a closer look at the photo revealed comet 12 Ponds P. Brooks as well, all right? So... Only one of the comets still exists. The Sun Grazer, Soho 5008, disintegrated. All right, Comet 12, 12P Pons Books is still falling towards the sun for a closer encounter. Okay, I got kind of sucked in with this story as well. Some other people reported this comet had uh, that Pons Brooks was the one that disintegrated. And now let's get this all cleared up real quick. It was not Pons Brooks, it's still out there. The Devil Comet still out there lingering around the other one was the this one i guess that was discovered that day and you know dove in there and made it look it sure made it look like this one was the one it was kind of deceptive and caught some people off guard got me off guard i was like what that thing was supposed to just be visible it wasn't supposed to approach the sun and it didn't it was a different comment so two comments on that day two hint hint on that day Intent two. Okay. Uh comment 12 P's is still falling towards the sun for a close encounter on April 21st. It is expected to survive. All right. Recent photos of 12 P show a magnificent tail bent and twisted by the solar wind. Would you like to look at the tail? Let's look at our tail. Look at that. Is that trippy or what? It has a bent kind of twisted looking tail so now the devil has a tail a twisted tail all right so you can come over here check it out it's a pretty cool article um give them a like or whatever some business all right we got to keep moving on moving on to the schumann and what a grinding session we had lots of pressure built up and then all of a sudden we had a release probably had a good volcanic blast or a series of them coupled with a couple of earthquakes and the 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 grinding the lock kind of released and now it's kind of cruising slowly we just had a little burp a little hiccup down below right here okay let me just get freshest data okay that is the freshest data all right so quite quite the session we had here and um all of this is all because of absorption and down at the at the core level in the shell when they that pressure on both of them uh both of them want to expand but the shell can't expand outward so it gets it has to expand inward on itself or inward down onto the core and they grind and that's the intensification of very low frequencies produced down below these frequencies come up through the surface up through the magma and then hit the crust and then emanate from the surface of the planet out into space but they bounce off of the magnetosphere ionosphere they, they emanate bounce off the ionosphere come back down as echoes and that's what this instrument does is detect the echoes that are emanating from the ground all right, bouncing off the ionosphere coming back down. This is the dynamo 
humming along at 7.83, all right? The little spinning dynamo inside the Earth that produces our magnetic field. That magnetic field has a frequency, which is 7.83 hertz, okay? And we have some... We came out of it pretty good. We had some good continuity there. Kind of weak right here. But then as we continue on, at least our blast right here, our intensification, is at our magnetic field resonance. So that's good. All right. But you can tell we had a big round of pressure and it just got relieved. Now, let's move on over to this. All right, we've got to uh, start where, Lord? Oh, Okay. Um, let's just take a peek at our jet streams. We haven't done the jet stream report in a few. All right, you can see it's very jumbled and choppy and very mixed bag right now. We also have cold air coming out of the Pacific Northwest, combining with moist air here over the plains. All right, that's what's causing our our weather kind of um, effect that we're having right now. All right. Let's get on over to the sandstorm. Oh, no, 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 no. That's why I wanted to do this. So there's your uh, your weather down at this altitude here. Okay, and you can see this band of uh, severe weather moving across the United States right now. Okay, so particulates, the sandstorm. Whoa. Oh, my. Remember last night it was like just a wave? Now it's actually cyclonic. Look at that. We have full circular rotation. That's cyclonic to me. Not like a cyclone, but it is a full rotation. It is a vortex of sand. A vortex of sand. There we go. Out over the uh, Atlantic Ocean right there. Looking like a big giant wave ready to threaten the East Coast. It's like God's hint. Look out. Here comes a big wave at the East Coast. And then you can see how the wind is taking this even over into South America, depositing it here in, uh, you know, Brazil and South America. It's a huge, huge sandstorm. We got different winds taking different plumes, different directions, covering most of the Mediterranean, going clear up here into by the Black Sea area. Uh, that's where they're yeah, more at. So they're going to be uh, fighting in the sand up there by... Um, Oh, wow. What was this? So look at this sandstorm here. Wow. That really increased here in Saudi Arabia. Okay. They're having a, a vortex growing right there. Let, let me say, sorry, in and out. But I, I want you to see this full circular rotation here. We do have a vortex growing right there, kicking up quite a sandstorm. All right. And then here we got another one on the Gobi Desert. So right now we're experiencing some very intense sandstorms. Okay, not a, not five of them, but our three main ones are very, very intense. And this thing is just a monster. It hasn't stopped since November of last year. Ongoing sandstorm for multiple months now, all throughout the winter, and continuing to grow in size and strength. Not a mention of it from the rest of the media. Okay. But I'll take you there. You guys are brave enough here. You understand the truth. You can handle the truth. Not everybody can handle the truth. That's the problem. That's why they don't tell you the truth. You can't handle the truth. Oops. I want the wind off. Sorry. Okay. Been a long road. I've been up for a long time. All right. Forgive me. Here we go. Nation divided. Bleeding out on one side, clearing up on the other. All right. And there's my little stripe that my cursor keeps leaving up through there. Okay. Anyways, you can see a little uh, darkening of this region a little bit. We've darkened up here in America. Um, let's come down here. Look at all these little individual sites darkening up. Each little pockmark is a lot more dominant. You see that? They pop more. Each little single one pops a lot more than before. 
So that's an indication of pressure in this area increasing as well. Each one of these dots is a little individual site, okay? Even the little faint ones. So that entire region right there, just here's our fulcrum point where we see our earthquakes and it also has the weak spot where the gas emits the most or most concentrated in a small condensed area. Okay, so there's your fulcrum point, and then all the way down South America, still pretty intense. Uh, we need to come over to them. Now, this is during the nighttime. Wait, 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 wait. Go back eight hours right there. That's what their real readings are. Okay, China's... Their issue is continuing to grow and intensify and spread and get darker and darker with each day that we take on more pressure. Same with Europe. It's starting to fill in. It's a bloody mess. It looks like somebody shot a side of beef with a shotgun. Sorry to put that image in your head, but it's just bloody mess. All right, let's look down here. Java. Okay, see how dark purple and concentrated it is around this island? So we do have a lot of pressure on the rise. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Also, little speckles down here in Australia. Explosions at negative depth on the West Coast. Okay, we'll get to that here in the earthquake report in just a second here. All right, oh. You can see this cyclonic uh, structure has picked up the SO2. So you got a, a, a stinky storm. <laughs> it's going to smell like rotten eggs. All right, let's move on. We also, just real quick, get to the ocean. I want to see the SSTA. Oh, that's why I had it here. There we go. Uh, still a lot of heat coming out of this region right here. <laughs> a lot right here coming out of Japan. So um, our region between the straits here between Taiwan and China has calmed down since yesterday. So I showed you on the Schumann the release of the brakes. Okay, that's like the you're applying a bad set of brakes and you, you haven't changed your pads and it's grinding, right? This is the... Sorry, this is the brakes grinding. So you just took your foot off the pedal and it's still going, still grinding slightly. A little squeak in the background. But all this, like say you came to a screeching halt and the, the grinding got really intense right here as you slam on the brakes and then you're going down a hill, but you're applying them halfway. All of a sudden there's a stop sign at the bottom of the hill and you have to slam on your brakes really hard right there. So all of that, grinding down below has been released that release of pressure has released right in here too okay now it releases in regions and still intensifies in other i don't know if it's intensified it just hasn't released here it's about the same okay and then we have this monster out here the world's biggest volcano starting to come to life now so or at least you're, we're seeing activity or uh, indicators of heat plumes in the water. These are uh, these are not seasonal. This is a heat aberration out there in the middle. It's not from the currents taking all of this out there. We've looked at that before. So that's your heat plume showing volcanic underwater volcanic activity, heating up the water in the regions. Okay. All right, moving on. Was that enough here? Do we cover everything you wanted here? There was something else. Oh, well, let's get on over to those earthquakes. Uh, the explosions on the USGS earlier today on the West Coast. Let me get to this on the West Coast. Okay, I got it set on all magnitudes already here.
this might be. I see what you're saying here, please. Quarry blast. Okay. Let's go see if it's really a quarry there. All right. Yeah. Looking like they're doing some quarry work. Okay. Real explosions, I guess. But we do have other activity to report on. So, whew. thankfully, it's not a bunch of terrorist explosions. Because uh, <clears throat> we'll probably be seeing that next with the clown in charge. All right, no deep region activity. We have this, like, uh, well, the suppression event again, this magnetic grip or um, pressure, this uh, atmospheric pressure that's kind of squeezing down on the planet, subduing some of the, the, uh, the earthquakes at the moment. So I expect to see some activity come out of this deep region here in a little bit. We did see a release of pressure down there. So, maybe we're not going to have any deep quakes for, for the moment. Coming up here, though, we did have this bad boy. Uh, 5.4 here, down at 51. A 4.5 there at 10. 4.8 right there. That's a deep one down at 492. This little pocket has uh, deep activity down there. And this is just off of Java here, okay? Or just down from it. And then right here... A 4.8 down at 35. This is right here where we have our volcano activity. We also have Krakatau right here currently erupting as well. And now we're having volcan or, uh, earthquake activity. See this deep little pit area right here down in this little region just off the plate boundary. 4.8. It may have been a little bit stronger than that. It's down at 35. So take a take a nail or a spike or drive it down in through the page down poke out the back of the computer down in there is where our activity is so we're seeing a lot of pressure being relieved at our relief valve area right there um now coming up here 5.9 just south of japan you know what we do with point nines here and it's for a reason okay we're probably looking at maybe a six here okay that's a, a pretty big magnitude jumping uh, point right there but the way these guys always round stuff down so they don't have to admit the higher numbers can have this type of effect and it was probably a six i'll let you be the judge of that as well okay some of you watch dutch sense and i agree with him on some stuff we don't agree on everything i love the man we can agree to disagree, but um, I've learned a lot from him, and he's learned a lot, and we agree on some things. Not everything. All right. All minor quake activity. Nothing really too big. If this is on all magnitudes. I was just kind of looking for those explosions. Um, here's our uh, quake swarm area. The the geysers doing most of the work, relieving most of the energy here for California. We did have this little stripe of quakes right here, starting with a, please, Lord, 1.3. Yeah, these are 1.7. My cat farts louder than that. 0.08. Here's a new one, though, uh, 1.6. All right, and then we have ones running down the uh, San Andreas today. See this all activity, all those ones right there, right on the plate boundary, right on the Andreas. A little bit of ongoing activity here, still lower Andreas, all through there. San Andreas, I call it Andreas sometimes, you know what I mean. Okay, very quiet around the Cocos Plate. All look at South America. Just really locked down. We haven't had a quake there. there were, this was all quiet yesterday as well. So very, very quiet in this whole region here. I feel like we're under one of those magnetic grips again, probably from the sun. This activity on the sun is causing um, not being our biggest quake of the day right there. Causing quiet. Do you see how kind of blank this whole region is? Not a single quake in there. Nothing in Africa. This whole region of the world 
was quiet. So it's just right, very, very condensed right around the this ring of fire part right here. Interesting. Now let's get back over here to the volcano report, bang this out, and get into the spiritual report, because I think you guys are digging that part. You're starting to understand. And many of you have already understood and are seeing the side effects and enjoying your peace. Okay, let's get on with it. Santa Guido, Fuego, Semeru, Ibu, Dakona, Reventador, Sangay, Lua, Toby. Ebico here, 15,000 feet. Okay, sorry for the little alert there in your ear. All right, back to business. Uh, Ebico here, 15,000 feet. Now, when we were talking Semeru's, you know, maximum was 14, and now it has a new maximum of 15. Well, there's Ebico at 15 as well. Okay. Here's Ibu. What number? 15 as well. Uh oh. <clears throat> Luatolo right next to it, 10,000 feet. Uh, Semeru right here, 14,000 feet. Ducono, uh, 8,000. Fernandina, we still have these lava uh, arms flowing down. It says the flow advance seemed to have slowed down a bit, but that'll probably, well, we've seen a release in pressure. So it, that these might come down a little bit now. All right. We've, we've reached the maximum of pressure. We've seen some kind of release. I believe it's all this activity right here that caused that drop in the Schumann, the, the release of the pressure. Continuing on. Lava arms, back to altitudes, 14,000, 15,000. Nevada Del Ruiz, semi-active at 21,000. Sangay, 21,000. Reventador, 14,000. All of these are 14s, 15s, 20s, 21s. Here's uh, Sabankaya at 23,000. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of pressure being relieved there by these tall blasts. And that was 15th. Oh, I know what happened is I put that page up way too early today. Let me just try. All right, 31 up here. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, there it goes. Hopefully it'll come back. It'll tell you 31. Oh, wait. Please, can we have it back one more time? There it is. 31 erupting, 19 in warning, and 30 in unrest. Add those all up. What's 31 and 19 and 30 is 80. 81, sorry. 81. No, no, no. Should be 80. Yeah. 80 volcanoes that are at least at unrest okay so we have a lot of activity out there now let me pop this part open again and see if we can get the 16th no nope, i guess there is no new 16th update all right moving on get on over here get this out the way now we're experiencing the severe weather outbreak right here in uh, south dakota that was the progression of it there we'll go uh, do a report on that here and then we'll uh, keep going. Did you guys ever have to have a report due in high school or middle school and you're dreading it? And you're like, oh, man, I got that report I need to do. It's due next week. Oh, I still got time or whatever. And you put it off and you put it off and you put it off until the day the report's due. And then you cram it together really quick at the very last moment. Yeah, I find it's just easier to get her done, get her over with. And that pertains to your taxes as well. And when I tell you about your taxes tonight, you're going to hate me and you'll unsubscribe and you'll stomp away from this channel. But I got to tell you something about your taxes. Anyways, we'll do that in the spiritual part. Don't let me forget either. 
So current conditions right here, we're, we're still got this little pocket of severe weather, South, uh, South Dakota, Northern uh, Nebraska. It did look uh, pretty dangerous earlier, but the potential for tornadoes looks to be uh, kind of dampened by the, well, there was a cap on the, the storm heights today, so they didn't get to get as tall. But still, uh, large hail, flash flooding, heavy rain, uh, high winds still. So that's your current conditions right now, the nighttime of the 15th. Now, as we go into the morning, this is a morning, nighttime morning event, and you still see little pockets that could pop up around here. This is showing Iowa and back up into maybe North Dakota. But then we go into the noontime, all that residual moisture in the air from overnight is still there in the morning with severe weather and then the sun hits it and it blossoms even harder by noon now we're talking iowa now they're looking at there and then by the convection here this is when cloud tops get to their highest the sun's been boiling all day we got iowa wisconsin let me just kind of get into this zoom a little closer for you folks because this is our next round this is our next closest event at for everybody to take heed, all right? Prepare, be aware, don't get caught off guard. Alarm your friends or family in this area. Um, there was another incident today. Storm chasers are tracking storms, they're chasing storms, and the weather radars went down. And they're like, whoa, 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 it's a good thing we weren't, you know, side by side with the tornado right now. So it's important to know these these de these details in advance, just in case on the day of we experience issues. Okay, so this isn't carved in stone either. This pocket can move and adjust or whatever. But everybody in this region, you have a very deep low, a very powerful storm that has the that has the potential on the backside. This whole series has been, most of the energy has been up at the top, not down on the tail. So this thing is very volatile. It has energy on the front side and on the back side and can pull up stuff in the tail. So this is a dangerous storm. Everybody take heed, all right? So back to our ow, ow, uh, report here. That's the convection of the 16th. There's the nighttime, so we're still going to have nocturnal activity, and it looks to be striking Chicago, Chicago area. I got to sneeze. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, well, at least it wasn't something else. Okay, so let me zoom in on this real quick. All right, yeah, that looks to be hitting like the Chicago area right in there, so. Everybody in Chicago, that whole populated area right there, just above uh, Indiana, Illinois, expect to have, ooh, excuse me, some heavy weather on the 19th, on the night of the 16th. There's the morning of the 17th, uh, noontime, convection, morning, or nighttime, morning of the 18th, a little possible tail back in here, but not much. Noon, convection, Nighttime of the 18th, morning of the 19th, noon, convection, nighttime, morning of the 20th, noon, convection, nighttime, 21, noon, convection, nighttime, 22, noon, convection, nighttime, 23. All right, pretty much clear all the way out through there. This next round right here will be, we'll have to watch this thing hit the West Coast here around the 25th because here's the morning of the 25th making landfall with severe weather eh, making landfall maybe the night of the 24th but getting severe by the morning of the 25th out west here as well as pop-ups down here in the morning of the 25th now it's way out there but look at this both of these increase in strength by the noontime there's the convection. This is all severe down the valley or the foothills with deep snow in the ridge tops there. That'll be the 26th now. Noon, convection, nighttime. 27, noon, convection, nighttime. See these lows 
twist up here and do all this kind of weird scattered effect. We're not seeing these QLCS, which is a quasi-linear storm front that likes to run uh, north to northeast like that. This is all moving. This is all moving north and even counterclockwise going backwards. All right, and that's way out in the future. None of that's set in stone. But look at this. All right, let's pray we don't have incidences like this. This is way out there, but you see how this cold drives really deep and hard, and it causes this rotation. It, like, punches this spin up, and it kicks out this huge blob of severe weather right there. That, just to let you know, that would be the nighttime, whoops, what they're showing is the nighttime of the 30th right there. So let me just zoom in real quick. It's not set in stone because it's so far out there. But you see how broad and big of an area of very severe weather we can get these days with these quick twist-up lows that spin up with severe weather on the top sides and back sides of them. Okay? That probably won't happen. That's going to change. I pray it does change because that's not a good little scenario right there. All right, and that was about the end of it. Okay, and that's the last frame. So there's your there's your weather forecast or your uh, at least your excuse me your next few days here. Let me uh, pound this monster real quick here. All right, yeah, chance of severe weather around the. 25th there on the west coast too as well so all right let me x out some of these i don't need the volcano i did want to keep the earthquake one yeah we can get rid of that one i think and that one and that one okay and this one so now let's get into our water bulge okay the event that we had here the other day, or back by the eclipse with our um, with our uh, oddity showing up here, and it was it, it appears that it was a uh, a bulge in the water. Okay, let me go look up the date real quick here. There we go. All right. You have to look it up every time you open up the instrument. So, so here is our bulge in the water. It's a lot higher than the surrounding ocean, okay? It's not a wave. Do you see how these little pop-up little waves are projecting the waves and the currents, the direction that they're going, all right? This isn't a white little curve. It's not a wave. It's a big dome. It's a big like a bulge in the water, okay? And that's what we've been talking about is this bulge in the water, all right? Now, what just happened over here is another bulge. Yeah, right here. And first off, you see this channel, World of Signs? I want you guys to come over here and show them some love, okay? I can't take donations. I don't, I don't have access to money. I can't use money, so I'm... But if you ever wanted to help me, help this channel instead, okay? They're very dear to my heart, and they do a great job. Now, wait, let me uh, get the sound going here as well. Because it's important to hear the eyewitness testimony at the very moment of witnessing, okay? Because your true reactions speak volumes, okay? If anybody has ever been in a car accident and captured it on film you will find when you watch the car accident again that you say the weirdest things come out of your mouth after you're in a state of shock okay so something outside the ordinary shocks your brain you're in a semi state of shock and your mouth says some amazing things okay that's why it's important to have testimony as going along with the video. So I'm going to play this a couple of times. It's got music in it, so just bear with me as I try to get all this without blowing your eardrums out. Okay. 
All right, they're talking about the bulge in the water. This lady's looking at it as well. Let's go back to the very beginning of the video. All right, here's some other people here. All right, and now this was just before the eclipse. I don't know if this is going to do it justice or not, but you should come over to this channel, like I said, and pull up this video and look at it yourself. This is not a uh, cloud structure. This is not an island out in the water or mountains on the opposite shore. This is a notable bulge in the water that was at Lake Erie just before the eclipse. Okay, so... What was I telling you about a bulge in the water? Hmm? What was I telling you about a bulge in the water? Now, when you look at this, I bet you're swallowing a little hard right now going, oh, shit. Okay. I was looking for evidence, and this is evidence. Even though it's at Lake Erie and it's not in Africa, it is a bulge in the water. Have you, when have you ever heard of a bulge in the water until this channel a couple nights ago? And now here, not reported on the news, captured by the public and reported just before the eclipse, this bulge rose from the water from Lake Erie. Lake Erie is a body of water. This is a bulge of water. It is possible. It happened just before the eclipse. And here we are at April 9th, right after the eclipse. So the probabilities that this bulge of water could happen just before pretty much mean the probabilities of one happening afterwards are pretty even now, aren't they? Aren't they? Oh, shit. Yeah, swallow hard. Look at what you're looking at. I'm telling you, this is a real event. It had side effects here. It flooded South Africa. It did so much damage. They're trying to hide the reports of it. And some of it is rain damage, but some of it is uh, <clears throat> clearly, clearly, clearly catastrophic. Okay? Because of the... And following this event... Okay, this bulge in the water. Let's go through this again. You guys, I don't have to for you. I'm doing this for the common folk, really. Six feet height. As we get into yellow, nine feet, 10, 13, 15, um, 21 feet, 24 feet, 23 feet. These are not waves going in this direction that are that high. This is a rise in height of water and then it maxes out the the instrumentation its highest reading is 83.7 it did not create a plateau a flat area that was 83.7 even all the way around no that's the maximum this is it probably went up to 90 or 100 feet no telling this thing when when measured at its maximum effect up here well, it was what two thousand miles wide, and fifteen hundred or two thousand miles long, fifteen hundred wide. Right there at its maximum, right there. All right, this is a big dome or a big bulge of water, and don't tell me it's not possible because you're you're looking at it right there. It's important that for you to come over here. Something I did, this is a little test I like to do because um, I know optics very, very well, okay? I would like to take this effect and make sure that it's not clouds, that it's not a mountain, that it's not anything else besides the water. So I like to tint it out like this and watch the color band change. Oh, wait. Um... Oh, shit. That is water. 
that is a big bulge of water in the middle of Lake Erie just before the eclipse. Now, we had this event, okay? This is another big bulge of water. They rise slowly. I believe it's caused by these objects, you know, um, interacting, their gravitational field interacting with our gravitational. Now, we're talking gravitational, not electromagnetic. It's both, but... We're just talking the gravitational aspect of it, where like the moon would, it would lift water off the surface a little higher and create a high tide. All right. So there was this and it created a new tide. It reversed the uh, currents here at the South America. It created a new tide structure. So this glitch is no longer a glitch. It's a real event. Okay. No if hands, or buts now, huh? Whoops. And especially, this is perfect because one got captured before it, okay? It would be perfect if this was the actual African coast, but I know it was bigger than that. Here's an effect, though, on a... It would have a smaller effect on a smaller body of water as well. So something latched onto our gravity had this effect before the eclipse passing over uh, Lake Erie, all right? And then after the eclipse finished, we have a secondary object that possibly passed over this region and caused this bulge. These are two different bulges, two different time frames, all right before and right after the eclipse. There was something trailing the moon in that eclipse. Or was that the moon? Because that eclipse was extra wide, extra long. Hmm. Some odd things, different things about that eclipse that makes me wonder, was that possibly a celestial body, maybe? Besides the moon, you know, it just happens to be right under it or coincide with it or be, you know... Uh, this image I had shown you before that I drew in the institutions, this one here, where we have this dark, what we call the stellar core or whatever, the dark sphere underneath the moon, taking just a small little bite out of the bottom. This, this is like the shadow of the dark side of the moon. It was a half moon that night with the round side pointing down over the canyon and right before apex here, right before the, you know, they lined up perfectly this way, just as it approached apogee or perigee or whichever it was, I, I saw it. Okay, so this would be a gravitational body accompanying the moon, all right? Accompanying the moon. Accompanying the moon. Understand what I'm saying? I believe we have another celestial body that was accompanying the moon, possibly two of them. One that was right before, one that was right after. Now, I want to go back. This, the eclipse was on the 8th. So, if we did have any activity, it would be captured around the sun, well, three days before. So, three days before the 8th is April 5th. Now, I got it open here on April 5th. We did a report on this night, and I commented, hmm, that's going to coincide with the eclipse. Whoops, did you see that? So, let's get it on. First of all, this first one. Wait, wait, wait. This one right here, it's not the first one, but it, it's at 1506 here. You see it hiding in the plasma there. It's very, very faint on this side. You don't even see it. But, whoops, bingo, there it is. All right, now, the region that this is coming from, this is when we see CMEs come out of this region, they have a tendency to head towards Earth, don't they? 
Oh, yeah, they do, huh? That's why we watch this region right around here because some of this stuff has a tendency to come towards Earth. Well, this came out of that region heading towards us three days before the eclipse, which these things take three days to get there. Okay, so there's one. Oh, can you see that one? <laughs> you remember this one that we reported on? It's also in that same region that we watch for CMEs that would be earthbound, okay? So we have objects that were earthbound three days before, that looked to be earthbound three days before. In fact, I can tell you most of these objects are coming to earth. There's no other spot in the universe more important than this spot right now. Okay. Anyways, here's classic, classic capture. I mean, well-defined. Here's our objects showing up by the sun three days before the eclipse when they would arrive around the 8th. Okay. And this looks to have a secondary one right there. Let's go just a tad bit more. All right. We can even back up a little bit now that we're here. And it looks like right back there, right there. Okay, we know this one exists. We see on that one clearly, but this secondary one here on the side, that's not a ghost image. Okay, that's two of them kind of side by side there. All right, so maybe there were three that day that passed. Maybe a whole cluster of these things passed that day. And we saw gravitational effects in different areas of the world causing bulges, uh, you know, different effects on the planet. And now I'm thousand percent sure that this is a real event. It is a real dome or bulge of water that would be lifted up by a gravitational effect by a passing object. Lifting water in a dome-type shaped structure or a bulge or whatever, slightly off the surface, uh, in a small body of water. Well, this is not a small body of water, but it's not an ocean, so it would probably have a smaller effect. Or this could be a smaller object, maybe closer, maybe further away, but people witnessed a bulge in the water. Okay, just before the eclipse, and we have the indications of one happening on the instruments right after the eclipse. Ta-da, there's my report. How'd I do, teacher? How was my grade for that one? I know I was late. I put it off and I put it off, but uh, we got the report done at least, huh? <laughs> so... Yeah, everybody take a minute to wrap your head around this for a minute, okay? And this wasn't the first event. We had one just a couple months before. And now what I want to do, it's tempting to do, is measure the, the time gap between the first event and the second event. And then add that time gap to this event to find out when it possibly expect the third one, right? That's how uh, scientists would, you know, look at these first two events to forecast a third. Would you would subtract the time between the first event and this event, find the gap of the time, and then that gap would say it was uh, a month and a half. It was 34 days or something like that. We'll say so. 34 days. 34 days from this day, tack it on, and you would possibly have a new projection date to look at. Then if it did happen on that day, you would have confirmation of your theory, wouldn't you? That's the scientific method. I don't know what you guys use, uh, Google or TikTok or Pornhub or something for your scientific method, but I like to look at the instruments and um, observations and then put it to the test. If it passes the test, then it is. If it doesn't, it doesn't.
Okay, so looks like we had us a real effect here, real event there, and it appears to be caused by maybe this object that appeared uh, coming off the sun three days before in the vicinity of making a pass by the Earth. Not too tough to figure out. It's just hard to believe. That's the only problem. It's not really tough to figure out. It's really simple stuff. It's just hard to believe and accept. So you've been so preconditioned by school and the media into thinking that uh, almost that celestial bodies don't exist, even though you live on one. Uh, there's only the Earth, Mars, uh, just these nine planets, and we'll take a Pluto and we'll not we'll, we'll cancel that one. So they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And you guys were raised with a, this very closed field of view to look at. And the idea of there being another celestial body rotating around a star, our star, much like we are, seems preposterous. I, I don't get that way of thinking at all. I guess maybe that's why... I see things differently than most people do because I don't, I don't take their programming as the gospel. Okay, it's far from it. It's all deception, actually. The when they tell you something, usually the direct opposite's the truth. And I heard something today and thought, uh oh, if the direct opposite of what he just said happens. Anyways, there is good evidence right here that this. Series of events, this object, this one, the one just before it in the plasma, could have been the inducers of these water bulges that were our new activity that we're starting to detect now on our instruments. Okay. And I hope they please keep reporting this. Don't don't let it be a glitch. Don't cover up like that. This is vital truth that we need. You know, this I don't like it when they come out and say, oh, it's a glitch. And then the next time it happens, they can cover it up just saying, oh, it was just uh, d d glitchy data that we had to delete. Well, unfortunately, it had effects prior to it, leading up to it, and then definite side effects after it. Side effects. That means effects from it. So now what? We have effects from it. It's an actual event. And the idea of a dome of water or a bulge of water seems preposterous until, whoops, captured by somebody over a different body of water actually happening. Actually happening. Actually happening. Actually happening. Okay? All this stuff is actually happening. And that's what makes this channel so cool is because we move on from this to other stuff that is actually happening. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to get also settled in. Go get your drinks. Go to the bathroom while I pull up our images here. We'll start doing our spiritual report. Go get your friend, your lover, your cat, your dog, whoever it is you like to curl up with. Uh, I know some of the people like to go out in their cars, uh, park down by the river in a quiet Coming spot. The first page of Google? My and, uh, you know, pause the video and put it on your spot there for our spiritual report let me just get loaded up here so thank you with your patience okay very very important event here that's why i keep showing this to you it's i almost died taking these pictures it hurts so bad to hold my camera up for an hour my heart was racing until i passed out onto the ground my kids were screaming dad what are you doing you're gonna you're scaring us. And I'm like, don't, don't worry about it. I'm in the middle of something. I'm busy capturing the most important thing in human history. Second, well, one of the most important things in human history happening again. All right. So that's why I keep bringing this to you. Real event. It cost me dearly, but it's worth it. It's worth it because the world needs to know. All right. So we got... This image pulled up here. Um, 
I'm not going to play wavy lines right now. I'm not even ready. I need that one also, Lord. I need this one. And uh, today's been one of those days where I have to pray about every move I make. Okay, please, Lord, help this one more too. Just please let this one open. And be good. Can I pause? Thank you. X out of the... I'm on that size, but without the chat. All right, so again with this event right here, real event. That's an, another real event captured by somebody. This guy went out, bought his camera, bought a new camera because he'd seen this before and was so blown away, he wanted to capture it. So we're going to watch that little part right here. Like I said, eyewitness and testimony. The tone of their voice, what they say during the event means more than the footage sometimes, all right? There it is. Let's see if I can get a better picture on the moon. Here, let me just pull back. I want you to hear his whole Gosh. story. What is that? Let's just take, let's just take, check this out. Let's take a look at this. It is February 28th, 29th, 28th, 29th. Leap day. I have got me a better quality camera. To catch this thing in the sky. And holy moly, I am scared. I'm scared, but I'm not going to trip because I've been catching this thing for a while now. Okay, the I, I'm not trying to be racist, but most times you can tell that this is a black gentleman's voice, okay? I'm not trying to be racist. I'm just saying I can tell by his voice and by his speech that we have a big, strong black man who is scared by what he sees. Now, listen again. Check this out. Let's take a look at this. It is February 28th, 29th, 28th, 29th. I have got me a better quality camera to catch this thing in the sky. And holy moly, I am scared. I'm scared, but I'm not going to trip because I've been catching this thing for a while now. It's very ominous. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. It's a huge face. What is that? Looking right down on us. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit brighter. There he is. There's the moon. Oh, I lost it. There it is. Let's see if I can get a better picture. I'm on the moon like it's supposed to. Is my hand in front of the thing or something? Now, it's the face by the moon. This is not a face being illuminated by the moon in the clouds. This is not a face in the clouds being illuminated by the moon. This is an object that's out by the moon and when zoomed in on and closely inspected, turns out to be my face in the sky. Ugh. It's just... Uh, well, it is what it is, I guess. So, we got this image right here and our other one pulled up. Yeah, all right. I guess we're ready to do some reading. So, everybody take deep breaths. I got to do mine, too, as well. Get set up in my... Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Well, before I do the reading here, I'm going to say something that's probably going to make you a little upset, but it's fixable, okay? All of you guys are scurrying around today to get your taxes done at the last moment, worrying and worrying. And, oh, my gosh. And when am I going to pay? How am I going to afford this? I can't afford that. Blah, blah, blah. All of that time. Um, how am I going to say this, Lord? Tell them, okay, all right. all right, so we have a criminal administration, right? So a known criminal administration. We have a rogue presidency right now. And when you fund a criminal organization, a criminal enterprise, or a crime family, much like the Biden family is, I'm not accusing, I am stating facts. When you fund a crime organization, that's a felony. 
So congratulations, all my little felons. You all just committed a felony today by paying your taxes. All right. And the reason why I got to tell you this is because they plan on taking that money for your demise. They're going to spend your money to kill you with it. And you stressed and worried about the money you were going to give them to kill you with. Okay? We have a big, big problem that happened today. I am absolutely... I can't say it. Or, I don't like this. I don't like this day. Okay? I do not like to see my children being raped and pillaged of their hard work so some pedophile, lying criminal crime syndicate can come along and torch the planet. Because that's what's going to end up happening here. Now, now that you're all felonious and you're all felons, that's where you ask for forgiveness. You give unto Caesar what belongs unto him, and then you repent and ask for forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord, for funding my own demise. Forgive me, Lord, for not having the courage to stand up to evil and tell them no. Do you want these wars to stop? Do you want this border crisis to stop? Do you want all this stuff to stop? Quit funding them. If we could all organize and on tax day, give them the big middle finger and say, send a message to Congress, you're not getting paid this year. In fact, I like how Congress has drummed up charges against Trump, yet they're the ones at 380 members of Congress. Oh, let's go through this one again. I, well, I showed you the NBA NFL one. Most of you guys know that one. I'm not going to pull that up and drag you through that. If you don't know that one by now, you better get your ass over there and watch it. And you better watch it a hundred times until you get through your thick skull that our Congress is a gang. It's a gang of thugs and criminals that, uh, that specialize in writing illegal laws that benefit them. They don't abide by them, but they enforce them on you. Okay. You paid taxes to a rogue illegal government. Your your president stole this election. It was plain as day. For three years, there's been nothing but cowardice in this country. On one day, January 16th, we stood up and they quashed it like that and you all tuck tail. Where's the courage in this country? You need to stand up to these evil these evil people and cut them off. You, you know what's going to hurt them? Their, their purse strings. That's how you stop this. You want to stop child trafficking? Quit funding the people that are bringing them across. You know how they're getting the, the, the money to, to buy airplane tickets across here? From you. You're guilty. You're guilty of funding your own demise. Admit it. Get out of denial. Admit it. And ask for forgiveness. And you'll be okay. Now, as we get into my reading tonight... I hope that message sinks into you guys. I I hope I didn't offend you, but I kind of hope I did a, a little bit to shock you into doing something about this. They're going to set the world ablaze to cover their criminality. They're going to take as much money from you and cut and run, and go hide underground, and leave you to pay the bill. And everybody paid the bill today. They ran and scurried around and stressed and did all this. What if you did that for me? Huh? We could we could make a beautiful thing, not hell on earth. Okay, I'm sorry. I need to do my breathing again there. Oh, I feel him. He is on fire right now, you guys. He is Okay. Let my presence override everything you experience. Let my presence override everything you experience. Like a luminous veil of light, I hover over you and everything around you. 
I am training you to stay conscious of me in each situation you encounter. Um, when Jacob ran away from his enraged brother, he went to sleep on a stone pillow and he had dreams of heaven and angels and the promises of my presence. And when he woke, he was in shock. He was in that state of shock I was talking about. And he said, surely the Lord is, is in this place. And I was not aware of it. Now, he said, surely, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. How many of you were not aware that the Lord is in this place right here, right now, at this channel? After dreaming of heaven and angels and promises of my presence, that's when he exclaimed, in, in our terminology, he went, holy shit, God is here. I didn't know. I didn't know. That in our terminology to this day, with expression, he didn't say, surely the Lord is in this place. He was shocked. And he went, holy shit, God is here in this place right now, and, and, and I didn't even know, I, I wasn't aware of it, <gasps> that's the shock, that's the real aware of it, his discovery, okay, you guys, your discovery as well, was not only for him, but for all who seek me, so whenever you feel distant from me, surely the Lord is in this place, say it to yourself, when you're feeling distant from me, or when you're encountering problems, that phrase, surely the Lord is in this place. Now, finally, all that time and waiting, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Well, it happened. Now, it's happened. Surely the Lord is in this place. Okay? Okay. Now stay ever so close to me, and you will not deviate from the path I have prepared for you. This is the most efficient way to stay on track, and it is also the most enjoyable. So stay ever so close to me, and you will not deviate from the path. Men tend to multiply duties in their own observance of religion. This practice enables them to give money, time, and work but without yielding up to me what I desire most, their hearts. Okay? The practice of uh, observance of religion, the practice enables them to give money, time, and work, but it still doesn't yield up to me what I desire the most, and that's their hearts, their confessions. I don't need donations to the church and all that. That's what you guys try to do to make yourself feel better. But what I desire is your heart. So, rules can be observed mechanically, but once they become habitual or ritual, then they can be followed with minimal effort and almost no thought. These habit-forming rules provide a false sense of security. That's why a lot of you guys aren't feeling the, the security you thought you would get at church. Because they're they're doing, your rules have been observed mechanically. They became habitual and you followed them with minimal effort. You didn't put any, a bunch of effort into it. You didn't go the extra mile. You put in the minimal amount of effort and almost no thought. Now you guys are putting a lot of thought into it, aren't you? Compared to back then to now, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because those are habit-forming rules, and those habit-forming rules provide the false sense of secure, security, lulling the soul the soul into a comatose condition. I have to have a sip. Of, Lord, please slow down. I am trying to...
Okay. Let my presence override everything you experience. Stay close to me and you will not deviate from the path. Rules can be observed mechanically. They become habitual and they, they provide that false sense of security, lulling the soul into a comatose condition. Was your soul in this comatose condition before you came to this channel? You, you were finding some, but it wasn't everything. You were finding a little bit, but you you're, felt like your soul was still in this comatose condition. It's because those habit-forming rules provided that false sense of security. It lulled your soul into this comatose condition. Now, what I search for in my children is an awakened soul that thrills to the joy of my presence. What I'm looking for is people that enjoy my show, that like to come here and listen and enjoy this and get the peace from it. Okay, the more you trust me, the more peace you're going to get out of this. I swear to God. All right. So what I search for in my children is an awakened soul that thrills to the joy of my presence. I created mankind to glorify me and to enjoy me forever. I provide the joy. Your part is to glorify me by living close to me. All right? So live close to me, glorify me. You get the same joy that I'm getting by giving it to you. Sometimes it's better to give to receive, huh? Um, okay. I am with you in all that you do and even in the most menial tasks. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to change picture here. Hang on. What are you telling me? I was right there. All right. Back to this image here. Um, darken it up a little bit. Sorry. All right. Let's get back to it. I, uh, I am with you in all that you do, even in the most menial task. Okay, that's why I try to prey on every little thing here. I'm always aware. Uh, let's see. How would you do the menial task part? Okay, I am always aware of you, concerned with every detail of your life. Nothing escapes my notice, not even the numbers of hairs on your head. However, your awareness of my presence falters and flickers. It falters and flickers as a result of your life experience. Your life experience feels fragmented. So when you focus your broad, uh, when your focus is broad enough to include me in those thoughts, that's when you feel safe and complete. So, when your perception narrows so that problems or details fill your consciousness, you feel empty and incomplete. Okay, details. Um, when your perception narrows so that your problems, when you're focusing on your problems and the details of that, that's when you feel empty and incomplete. So that's why it's important that you do not focus or have a narrow perception on the problems or details because they will fill your consciousness, leaving you feeling empty and incomplete. It does every time. So learn to look steadily at me in all your moments and in all your circumstances. Though the world is unstable and in a state of flux, you can experience continuity through your uninterrupted awareness of my presence. You can experience my favorite word, continuity. Okay? You can experience continuity through your uninterrupted awareness uninterrupted awareness of my presence okay so though the world is unstable and in a state of flux you still get to experience continuity through your uninterrupted awareness of my presence 
That's why when you fix your gaze on what is unseen, even as the visible world parades before your eyes, you still get to see this and be blessed. A little foretaste of heaven. Um, it's important you guys know that your needs and my riches are a perfect fit. What is a perfect fit? What is the most perfect fit? Your needs and my riches. My riches. These real riches are your needs. Okay? You need this. You guys do need this, huh? You see more and more in the world today how vital this information is and you need it. So, your needs and my riches are a perfect fit, aren't they? We're having a great old time here at this channel, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, see? If it is it true? It is, huh? Your needs to understand and my riches of this are fitting perfect together, aren't they? I never meant for you to be self-sufficient. Instead, I designed you to need me not only for daily bread, but also for fulfillment of your deep yearnings. I carefully crafted your longings and your feelings of incompleteness to, the, to point you towards me. You guys are experiencing longings and feelings of incompleteness. So when you do that, that, that's to point you to me. So don't try to bury or deny these feelings. Beware also of trying to pacify these longings with lesser gods like people, possessions, and power. Because that's what most people fall right back to, is people, possessions, and power. So don't try to bury or deny that you have longings and feelings of incompleteness. Because there's a piece of the puzzle missing. That's why you have those longings and those feelings of incompleteness. Here's the, here's the missing piece. Here's the final piece of the puzzle. That's what makes you complete. That's what makes me the finisher of your faith. Your faith is finished. Now you know. Faith finished. Completed work. Now you know. That's why your needs and my riches are a perfect fit. So come to me in all your neediness with defenses down and desire to be blessed. Desire to be blessed. As you spend time in my presence... Your deepest longings are fulfilled, aren't they? Your deepest longings, your need to know, is fulfilled. Come to me in all your neediness with defenses down and desire to be blessed. As you spend time in my presence, your deepest longings are fulfilled. Rejoice in your neediness, which enables you to find intimate completion in me. Intimate completion in me. Yeah, you guys feeling better now? Even though you look out the window and you see what's going on across the street over there, across the pond. Um, we can't go to that yet, Lord. That's for tomorrow's show. Okay, the other the second tour note here. Um, order. Okay, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, everybody, take a deep breath, curl up, kiss your partner. And think about this. As you journey through life with me, see the hope of heaven shining on your path, lighting up your perspective. So as you journey through life with me, see the hope of heaven shining on your path, lighting up your perspective. Doesn't this light up your perspective? Yeah, it should. 
Remember that you are one of my chosen people belonging to me. I called you out of darkness into my wonderful light. Savor the richness of these concepts. I chose you before the creation of the world. So nothing can separate you from me. Because I, I chose you before the world. You belong to me forever. I drew you out of the darkness of sin and death into the exquisite light of eternal life. Haven't I? Haven't I drawn you out of the darkness of sin and death into the exquisite life of eternal life? Uh... No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The brightness of my presence helps you in multiple ways. The closer you live to me, you live, right? So the closer to me you live, you're actually living now. <sighs> so the closer to me you live, now you live. You live, the more clearly you can see the, the way forward, okay? So the more you live, the more clearly you can see the way forward. So the closer you live to me is the closer you live. So when you're living more, the more clearly you can see the way forward, that's the tough part there. I'm trying to get that part under. All right. Uh, hopefully you guys, I know a couple of you grasped that, but it's. Where do I want that spot? Uh, I drew, I give you strength, the brightness of my presence. The brightness of my presence helps you live in multiple ways. The closer you live to me, the closer, the more you live. So the more you live, the more clearly you can see the way forward. So the closer to me you live, the more clearly you can see the way forward, ultimately. So the closer to me you live, ultimately, the closer you can see the way forward. Huh. Ultimately. Right? Hopefully you guys are seeing that part. I'm performing miracles here, and I'm trying to show you what they are. Because they're hard to see sometimes. Okay. Um, let me get this other part. So, as you're looking at this, as you soak in this love-drenched light, I give you strength and bless you with peace. My radiance blesses not only you, but also other people as it permeates through your whole being. My radiance is permeate, permeating through your guys' whole being. My radiance is permeating your being. Uh, and it blesses not only you, but also the other people as it permeates you. So... This precious time spent focusing on me helps you become more like me, enabling you to shine into the lives of others. Um, I'm also continually drawing my loved ones out of darkness and into my glorious light. So as more people come to this channel... I continually draw more loved ones out of darkness and into my glorious light. So, take a nice, long, deep breath in. And be still in my presence and wait patiently for me to act. Spend quality time with me. This Spending of quality time with me is so good for you. I rejoice when you push back all the many things that are clamoring for your attention and focus 
and then you focus wholeheartedly on me. I rejoice when you do that. I rejoice when you push back all that other stuff and you focus on me. It makes me feel good as well. It, doesn't it make you feel good when I focus on you? It does, huh? So everybody likes to have their people focus on them every once in a while. But it's not for my, to stroke my ego. It's to help you guys. So be still and wait patiently for me to act. Spending quality time with me is good for you. I rejoice when you push back all this other crap and spend time wholeheartedly with me. I know it's hard for you to sit quietly with me, and I don't expect perfection from you. Instead, I treasure your persistence in seeking my face. I treasure your persistence. I treasure your persistence. Persistence in seeking my face, persistence in shining my light, persistence in sharing it with others, persistence in following the word, studying the word, persistence, persistence, persistence. It's not perfection, it's persistence. Perfection will get you in trouble. You'll think you're number one and you won't be hungry anymore. And number two will be persistent and pass you in the last corner of the race. I am not looking for perfection. I treasure your persistence. My loving approval shines on you as you seek me with all your heart, doesn't it? Doesn't my loving approval shine on you as you seek me with all your heart yeah this intimate connection between us helps you wait trustingly for me to act you guys are finally waiting trustingly for me to act don't look at israel to act don't look at the media to act don't look at that other stuff your intimate connection between you and me helps you helps you wait you're waiting you're waiting be still in my presence and wait so while you're waiting this intimate connection that we have already helps you wait trustingly for me to act um Again, here with this, do not worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Trust that I'm still in control and that justice will ultimately prevail. I will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in my truth. Meanwhile, look for ways to advance my kingdom in this world. Keep your eyes on me as you go through each day and be willing it's willing, being willing to follow wherever I lead. Do not be overcome or discouraged by evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, do not be overcome or discouraged that you had to be a felon and pay your taxes to a criminal organization just do not be overcome or discouraged but overcome evil with good sometimes you you gotta ground your your kids they got in trouble and you you gotta you gotta punish them for their own good right all right we cut those purse strings off from those guys okay so Let's finish off with this one. I'm always telling you this image is so darn important. Okay. If you got your eyes closed, open them up for a second just to peek at that image and know which one I'm talking about. Because while you're looking at that, I want you to know I am the rock that is higher than you in your circumstances. Do you see me? Do you see this foundation? You know, Rock Dwayne, the Rock Johnson? Do you smell what the Rock is cooking? Do you smell what I'm cooking? Do you smell what this Rock is cooking? 
Because that's what they're talking about, really, is me. I'm the chef. I'm the one cooking up the stew here. I am the rock that is higher than you and your circumstances. I am your rock. Okay? Not just the rock. I am your rock in whom you can take refuge at any time, at any place. So come to me. Rest in the peace of my presence. Rest in the peace of my presence. Take a break from trying to figure everything out and admit that many, many things are beyond your understanding and beyond your control. My ways and thoughts are higher than yours as the heavens are higher than the earth. So, when the world around you looks confusing and evil appears to be winning, remember this. I am the light that keeps on shining in all situations. And light always overcomes darkness whenever these two opposites meet face to face. Light always overcomes darkness whenever these two opposites meet face to face. So, have that yeah, it is security in your belt buckle. Put that notch in your belt buckle as, as some security. The light always overcomes darkness whenever these meet. And since you are my follower, I want you to shine brightly in this dark, troubled world. <sighs> Starting to see it now? You guys are meant to shine in this dark world. Since you are here watching and following, that's like following on Facebook or following by watching is following. And since you are following, I want you to shine brightly in this troubled word. Whisper my name, sing songs of praise, and tell others of good tidings and of great joy. That I am for real and that I am the Savior and that I am the Savior who is Christ the Lord. I am also the one who is with you continually. So keep looking to me and my presence will illuminate your path. It already is illuminating your path. When I entered your world as the God-man, I came to that which was my own. That's you. That's you guys. Even on uh, uh, repeat, watching it later. When I entered your world as the God-man, I came to that which was my own. You guys. Everything belongs to me. Most people think their possessions are their own, but the truth is, you and everything you possess belong to me. Therefore, Everything belongs to me. You and everything you possess. The truth is, you and everything you possess belong to me. Though you may feel isolated and alone at times, this is only an illusion. You are never alone. You are never isolated. You may feel isolated and alone at times, but that is a illusion. I bought you at an astronomical price, so you are mine. You're my treasure. The colossal price I paid shows how precious you are to me. Okay? The colossal price reflects how much you, how much I cherish you, how much you mean to me. Ponder that powerful truth for a while. Huh. So whenever you start to, um, yeah, whenever you start to doubt your self-worth, ponder that truth. Here, let me start again. The colossal price I paid shows how precious you are to me. 
ponder this powerful truth whenever you start to doubt your worth. Okay, whenever you start to doubt your worth, remember the colossal price I paid because that shows how precious you are to me, okay? You are my cherished one, saved by grace through faith in me, your Savior. Because you are precious to me, I want you to take good care of yourself spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Make time for emotional and physical. Wait, wait. No, no, no. Make time for pondering scripture. Yeah. Take time, or if you have to, make time for pondering scripture in your mind and in your heart. Prote protect yourself both emotionally and physically, from those who would take advantage of you. Remember that your body is the Holy Spirit's temple. I also want you to help others discover the glorious good news, the free gift I give of eternal life for all who believe me. Eternal life for all who believe me. Because I can't get my own family members here in my own house to believe me. They won't give me five minutes of their time. I went through multiple institutions, jails, all kind of horrendous stuff. Because my family wouldn't take five minutes to look at this beautiful image and hear my notes. So, I think that might be it. Um, what time is it? Oh, yeah, that's it. I gotta go. I gotta go. Ah, I let time go by too much. I want to spend even more time with you guys, but I have an emergency that's coming up here in about 15 minutes, and I need to get out in front of it before it happens. And that way, I've learned to just not even play games anymore. Just get out in front of it, stay out in front of the... It's like that ball that's rolling down the hill in, uh, in Indiana Jones, the ball, that big stone ball that's chasing him. Well, it's going to seal up the door for good. So you need to get out in front of it and stay out in front of it and make sure you don't trip and fall because it can run over you. So that's how I've learned to get out in front of it. I know it's going to happen in 15 minutes here so I can beat it to the punch. All right. So I love you all. God bless you all. I miss you all. And until my next show, I will be back. I might even, if I can get early rescued and early return i could be back and may possibly do some more uh some more work with you guys tonight i might do a second stream for maybe an hour in about an hour maybe a little later all right but for now that's it i love you all i miss you all okay this is an awesome experience it's very painful it's very hard to do it's been very um I'll just say very hard to do. And I, I I appreciate your patience and your tolerance and your acceptance because in real life, those are the real things that matter. And I found that. So when I find it in other people, I appreciate it. So thank you for spending time, your precious time with this precious family. And I hope you had a good time at the show tonight. I love you all. I miss you all. And I'll try to come back in a little while. Until then, I will be back. I am already back. You are secure. This is your foundation. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Oh, good. I'll be back. I love you all. Bye.